Now, here to discuss the Jesse Smollett verdict and the ramifications of his fake hate attack is the Post Millennial's editor at large, Andy No. Andy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. So, Andy, we've got to talk about this here because this is just an absolutely fascinating case, I think, to so many people here in Australia. And the question I have is, Jussie Smollett's crime was so bizarre and utterly unbelievable, why do you think so many people fell for it? Did they just want it to be true? Well, it's no surprise that the, the media establishment, the media classes, uh, always in line with what the Democratic Party's uh, agenda and goal is. I mean, if you go back to the beginning of 2019, when Smollett's explosive allegations came out, at that time, Democrat politicians were pushing uh, anti, so-called anti-lynching legislation, which was uh, just a publicity stunt because murder and uh, murder is already uh, criminalized and illegal. And um, Smollett's history in particular, it, he ha has and had very close ties to the upper echelon of those in the Democratic Party. And all of them saw what his claims were, which uh, blamed everything that the Democrats hated um, uh, Trump, Trump supporters, what they think Trump stands for. So it's convenient to latch on. Um, I wasn't surprised that all these uh, celebrities came out to weigh in because celebrities are by and large stupid. Uh, <laughs> but I was disappointed to see uh, politicians who uh, now have come to uh, be president and vice president, respectively, uh, throw in uh, their full support behind Smollett when from the very first that we knew of the case, it was already hard to believe. Yeah, and I mean, Jesse Smollett is now facing both sentencing for his crime as well as potential civil suits. I mean, do you think that for all he did with this to tear apart the country racially and contribute to that element of division in the U.S., is this a fair price to pay for his blatant lies that not only wasted taxpayer money, but also, let's not forget, distracted police officers in a very violent city, Chicago, from investigating real crimes? Yeah, so your viewers uh, should be reminded that the prosecutor in Chicago, King Fox, actually moved to uh, not prosecute Smollett. Um, so there was a special process that came in place uh, to intervene, because otherwise Smollett wouldn't have been prosecuted on any crimes. That's how powerful uh, he is, and his connections actually are. Um, even though he could be sentenced to jail time for each of these felony charges, um, it's not going to happen. It's Chicago, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, in America, if you are on the left, and particularly if you're politically connected, you're not going to be um, a sentence to what you should be for crimes that you commit. Well, I mean, as I think I saw somebody had a marvelous line, though. They said that if he was to go to jail, you know, the really cruel thing is that he'd be forced to share a cell with his own attacker. So there you go. But you have a um, magnificent tweet, and I know Twitter is often a sewer, but there are little diamonds in there that outlines the truth behind a lot of these hoaxes. And you say that uh, I'm surprised when people are surprised that Jussie Smollett would fabricate a hate crime. People who claim to be victims of the right or whites are rewarded by American society, often financially. Some will lie. Um, the fact that people uh, are compensating this, this culture of oppression, how long has this been the status quo? Well, Americans are a good people. So when they hear that a person has been victimized um, to hate, there's an outpouring of support. And unfortunately, there are those, uh, usually uh, on the left, who will take advantage of that kindness from Americans to uh, claim to be a victim. And uh, before I did reporting on Antifa, I used to write about hate crime houses a lot. And uh, there's usually not a lot of national coverage on it because mm. it's inconvenient to the talking points of the left. Um, but as you can see, like Smollett, uh, or on a smaller contact at a university setting, as soon as you come out uh, and provide no evidence and make some outlandish claim, you get media attention, support from the administration, support but from others. You can set up a GoFundMe, people donate money. There's so much to gain by being 
a, a victim, that people go as far as to fabricate uh, hate hoaxes. But I mean, I'm glad you said before that, you know, Americans are fundamentally a decent people. I think they are, and, uh, you know, I have a lot of good reasons to say that. But does this show the fact that this crime, this hoax crime happened and so many other hoax crimes have occurred, Andy? Does this actually prove that America is not the racist society that, you know, some people on the left would have people believe if people have to go out there and make up fake hate crimes because there's not enough real hate crimes for them to capitalize on? Yes, if we believe the talking point from the establishment left that hate is so, um, it's banality in America and it's so common, if we were to hear uh, some of these allegations, we would shrug our shoulders and think that's life, that's how life is like every day in America. But the fact is, it's not. And it it strikes at the core of, for the average American, when you hear something, you know, so hateful happening. Um, and... Uh, because hate crimes are actually so rare, and we have the data, you can look at how often they uh, are, uh, happen uh, by the population size. And uh, unfortunately, whenever there is an incident that happens or alleged to happen, there's a lot of attention. Whenever it's then reported later on that it's unsubstantiated or even faked, mm, yeah. uh, there's usually not that media coverage. I have a, a clip here from over a year ago where you talked to Dr. Phil about this exact problem. Let's have a look at that. Why does somebody lie about a crime like this? Well, they tend to lie because they feel victimized overall. They feel like, I am generally victimized by the system, so this event that I'm reporting, while not specifically true, is emblematic of how I am generally treated by the system, so it is not a lie. And actually, a lot of hoaxers don't even think that they what they're doing is wrong. Right. They, I mean, a lot of what Sally was saying here was really about the, the the larger narrative, the larger story about bringing attention to hate in America and the climate of hate. So as long as we still find it a silver lining or justification for hoaxes, we're going to continue to incentivize it. The Let's problem is somebody on the other end of that hoax is held accountable and pays a price for something they didn't do. Yeah, I mean, Andy, why is it these people who blatantly lie seem to feel as if it's the appropriate course of action? Well, they, they can gain mon monetarily, financially. I mean, the, the prosecutors uh, said that Smollett carried out his hoax because he essentially, for PR purposes, he wanted to make a bigger name for himself. So it's a bargain for higher uh, pay for his uh, work on the Empire television show. Um, but there are many people who excuse these acts or think that ultimately, the while the hoaxes are, are bad, that they help bring attention to um, the climate of political hate in America, how racism is, is an epidemic in America, and, and therefore this possibly a silver lining. We see that over and over, particularly uh, most, it's, it's actually quite unusual that the convictions will will happen most of the time when these happen at a local level or on, on university campuses, administrations um, will put out some statements saying they investigated. Uh, unfortunately, it's untrue we, and they just want to move on. And um, despite this particular instance being not real, there's still so much hate in this country and on our campus. And, and then they just move on. It's actually really rare that anybody's held accountable for what they do. Mm. And, and which, by the way, I, one of what people should pay attention to is when somebody claims to be a victim of a hate crime is, does that alleged victim go to the press and the media or social media first, or do they go to law enforcement to mm. report the crimes? Great points, Andy. As always, thank you so much for your time, and uh, you can check out Andy's work at thepostmillennial.com. Uh, Andy, thanks as always, and uh, see you soon. My pleasure.